Here's a radio that even those of you who collect transistor radios have probably never seen before. It's a Westinghouse Model 6PT1, and it's the uh, first transistor radio built by uh, Westinghouse of Canada, and it may even be the first Canadian-made transistor radio. Despite what uh, Radio Museum says, this set was produced in 1956. There used to be a fairly good write-up on this set on the uh, Transistor History website which has unfortunately gone down you can see that uh, they added a nice badge that says transistor to the front there this you know um, radio was built in the case of a uh, earlier tube model as if you can't tell from its size uh, you can see it's got a vent there on the bottom the tube radio model it was based on had you know wire legs that attached to these uh, loops there and you know where the where these pegs are now so they made it somewhat portable but it's uh... it's a pretty hefty set it weighs several pounds i replaced all the electrolytic capacitors in this radio and it i mean it works decently well nothing particularly special maybe that's why the set is rare because a lot of times we in the industry don't and we should every time we we have the opportunity although to be fair to the set it does work pretty well for a 1956 uh, transistor radio You can see that this example has definitely seen better days. The original uh, owner had glued it with some kind of gray colored glue, maybe JB Weld. I uh, scraped out the worst of it and you know re-glued it with uh, super glue. There are also quite a few other unglued cracks which I did repair. Some of those repairs turned out pretty well and you can't even see them like a uh, crack all the way along here. But it's a fairly rare set. I also have the uh, original leather case for this set. There's the bottom there. It's marked Genuine Western Saddle Leather. And here's the uh, upper part. It kind of snaps on there. I don't know why the upper part's a different color. Maybe it was a replacement? I don't know. I like the color of the uh, lower section better. It's fairly nice. I wouldn't pick it up by this handle anymore though. You can see the set got a fair bit of use. Now, in true Canadian fashion, this set has uh, those square-headed screws. I forget what the name of those things is, but thankfully I have the uh, right screwdriver for the job. The set also came in a leather cabinet version, of which I have only seen uh, one example of. You can see why I disagree with this set being from 1958. Those are very early uh, 
Texas Instruments units there. And also two uh, transistors from the General Transistor Company, which are also very early units. The set takes a, an EverReady 276 battery, and I've got a re-stuffed one installed there for that original look. Changing the battery is a little annoying because you have to remove the uh, two screws on the back, and then you know these two screws here to take the battery out. But uh, with the low current draw, of this set and that huge battery, you know you'd probably get a year's worth out of it. Unfortunately, one of the uh, you know, matting posts was completely gone, snapped off. So I, uh, you know, kind of glued the upper part of the chassis back in place there, but you know, didn't work out too well. The uh, volume control rubs on on the case. It's not a set that I, you know, listen to very often because the sound quality is nothing special. This is one of those sets I have more for the uh, historical value than anything else. The back cover is the same as the tube radio the set was based on. So if you've got a you know better one you're willing to sell me, let me know. Cause like I said, this one's pretty shot. The actual case itself isn't too bad. This is the only real significant damage. Well, thanks for watching.